I was browsing through TikTok when I came across this piece of code and this comment associated with it. This isn't readable at all. And reading that comment got me irrationally angry. Of course it's readable, it's so simple. Start index, end index, negative one as the step size, so you're gonna be stepping backwards through the entire string, so you're reversing the string. That's what string bracket double colon negative one bracket does. It reverses the string. Of course I know this is very readable. I've been using Python forever. Of course I understand what it means. How can this person not know what it means? Any good Python programmer or any beginner Python programmer understands this piece of code. That's all led me to realize that the commenter probably doesn't know Python and that everybody has very different definitions of what readable code actually is. It varies from person to person, organization to organization, and company to company. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at what exactly readable code is and by extension, what clean code is. First, let's take a look at our toy example here. Is it clean code? Is it readable? Like I've already mentioned, it is readable to anybody that's written any Python before. It's about as readable readable as this snippet of code, x equals 1, where you set x equal to 1. Additionally, it's the most Pythonic way to actually reverse the string in Python, so if you were to write this code up and submit it to me in a pull request, I would approve it without a second glance. Of course, I am 19 years old and I will probably not be reviewing your pull requests anytime soon, but my point still stands. If you're somebody who's never touched Python before and you've only been coding in something like C your entire life, then of course you're not going to be able to understand what this snippet of code does. You probably prefer something that does the exact same thing, but in a for loop that's slightly more verbose. Of course, this version is more readable to you and the average programmer that doesn't know Python because it resembles a lot of other syntaxes and C style code. That brings me to my central yet half-baked point tempered by one in internships worth of experience. We all carry around, I think, three definitions of readable code up in our heads. There's the code that is very Pythonic, for lack of a better word, code that uses all of the syntactic sugar features in its language to the fullest extent so that anybody that codes in that language can pretty easily understand. It fits within the patterns of the language. It's very obviously good code and readable to anybody that uses the language. Then there's code that's basically readable to any single program. And this is code that's written very similarly to most syntaxes. So like, for loops that look like C, while loops that look like C, basically C style syntax if you're writing something like that and you're making it very verbose, maybe adding a few comments here and there. That's what I'll call like universal readability. Any programmer can really look at it and get the overall gist of what it's doing, even if they miss a few nuances. Then of course there's, you know, readability like English, which is just Python if, in some cases. It's very rare and far between, but of course, you know, anybody can read Python if given the right opportunity. Now obviously this all depends on your variable naming and other things like that, but I'm going to assume you're not naming your variables I, J, K, and L, and you're actually naming them something descriptive. Different people have different standards for their code, and of course readability plays a part in how clean your code is, but I don't think it's sufficient to be clean code. In our case, our toy example is both readable and clean code, but let's delve a little bit deeper. If you want your code to be clean, it very obviously has to be readable so that your teammates and other people that work on the project can add to it and maintain it, and to be maintainable, it has to be readable. And you also have to like break your code down into functions, classes, or whatever other weird crap you're into so that you're able to find bugs easily, add to the code base without changing too many things at once, etc., etc. You know, whatever all those solid things are at Uncle Bob, I think that people have a general consensus of what clean code looks like, or at least you'll be able to identify clean code when you see it. But that's not really the point of this video because that's not what made me irrationally angry in that TikTok comment. So let's go back to discussing our readability. Native speakers only readability is code that can only really be understood by people that actually know the language. If you've never learned Python, you would have no idea what our toy example does. And if you've never learned C, then you have no idea what this asterisk means and you wouldn't even know to call it a pointer because you've never encountered it before. But there are some languages that are able to use syntactic sugar and still be very readable to the average programmer. So there are varying degrees to this. Take this snippet from the Rust doc showing off match, for example. I think even if you've never written Rust code in your life, but you have programmed before, you can get a general understanding of what's going on. You're doing some sort of conditional check on a variable called number. If it's one, you're printing out, oh, it's one. If it's one, two, three, five, or seven, you're going to print out that it's prime. And then you don't really know what the last two do, but previous experience tells you that the last thing is kind of the else statement or the default statement, and then God knows what 13 dot dot equals 19 means. For your information, that's an inclusive range. Now, all of this is kind of understandable, even though you're not getting the nuances of it, and that leads us perfectly into our type 2 readability. Universal code is that which can be read by basically any programmer. I think in many programming languages, you can convert your code to be read by most programmers. All you have to do is be more verbose and sacrifice everything that makes your language cool and unique and awesome and fun to play around with. 
Some people might prefer this. Your manager might make you do it because they want to be able to understand what's happening in your code base, even though they don't know the programming language, but they were a programmer at some point. Maybe your code base has a bunch of random different languages for some reason that for some reason, not everybody on the team knows. So you have to write it more verbose so that other people can understand what you're doing in case they need to use it. I don't really know. I'm spitballing here. I'm kind of making this up as I go along. None of this is factually based. It's all just my opinion. Of course, doing all of this while sacrificing the unique advantages of the language that you're using might end up making it more readable to random people, but it might just make your developer experience a whole lot worse. I don't know why I'm getting kind of worked up about this. I think that TikTok comment just made me really, really, really angry. So just don't go on TikTok, kids. I can't actually even find the TikTok comment that got me so mad. It's horrible, truly. This brings me to my third and final point, code that just looks like English, and this is just Python most of the time. This is a little bit of a troll category, but there's still more for you to learn in this video from today's sponsor, Brilliant.org. Let's hear a word from the amazing sponsor of today's video, Brilliant.org, the best way to learn math and computer science online interactively. I've always said that the best way to keep yourself sharp is by learning something new every single day, and Brilliant makes this really easy to do, even if you only have 15 minutes a day to devote to learning something new. With a course catalog ranging from basic math to linear algebra, calculus, computer science, and science, there's always going to be something new for you to learn because they add lessons every single month. I really recommend their Algorithms Fundamentals course because of how it introduces people to the field of computer science. Even if you're mildly interested in computer science, I would really recommend that you take this class because it develops your skills from foundations and focuses on problem solving and intuition instead of just rote memorization. So what you learn, you're going to remember for a lot longer than if you were to just read it up from a textbook. If you already have those fundamentals down, then I suggest you take a look at their cool course on neural networks, or maybe learn some linear algebra and dive deep into that so you can build up your math foundations to become the best computer scientist that you can. If you want to try all of this out right now with a 30 day free trial, then go to brilliant.org slash Bay or click the link in the description down below. The first 200 of you will get a 20% off your first premium annual subscription for Brilliant. Enjoy. Thank you for listening to my slightly unhinged video about what readable code actually is. If you enjoyed it and you understood what I was saying, hit that like button, leave a comment and subscribe. And if you disagree with what I was saying, please let me know in the comments. Just be nice about it. Don't be mean. Anyways, YouTube is telling you to go watch this video. So you should go do that because their recommender system is great. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.